a ball is shot from the ground straight up into the air with initial velocity of 40 feet per second. Assuming that the air resistance can be ignored, determine the height after two seconds. Then determine how high the ball goes before falling back to the ground. For this problem, we'll be using s of t for the position or height function, v of t as the velocity function, and a of t as the acceleration function. Also remember the velocity function equals the derivative of the position function, and the acceleration function is equal to the derivative of the velocity function, which also equals the second derivative of the position function. Let's begin by listing out all the given information. Because the ball is shot from the ground, the initial height or the initial position is zero, which indicates s of zero equals zero. The initial velocity is 40 feet per second, which also means that v of zero is equal to 40 or 40 feet per second. And more specifically, s of zero equals zero means s of zero equals zero feet. Next, assuming the air resistance can be ignored, determine the height after two seconds, which means we're looking for s of two. We're also looking for how high the ball goes before falling back to the ground, which means we're looking for the maximum height. There's one more thing we also need to realize. The only acceleration in this problem is acceleration due to gravity, and because the units are feet and seconds, we know that a of t, the acceleration function, is equal to negative 32 feet per second squared. This is important because if we know the acceleration function and we realize the acceleration function is equal to the derivative of the velocity function, we can integrate the acceleration function to recover the velocity function. Or more specifically, the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of a of t dt equals the velocity function v of t plus c, which gives us the integral of negative 32 dt. Integrating, we have negative 32 t plus c for the velocity function. But again, we know the initial velocity, v of zero, equals 40. So when t equals zero, the velocity function must equal 40, which indicates that c is equal to 40. So now we know the velocity function equals negative 32t plus 40. From here, now that we have the velocity function, we can recover the position function or height function because the velocity function equals the derivative of the position function. So we can see the integral or antiderivative of v of t dt equals s of t plus c which gives us the integral of negative 32t plus 40 dt, which equals negative 32 times t squared divided by two plus 40t plus c. Simplifying, we have negative 16t squared plus 40t plus c. But again, we know s of zero, the initial height is zero. So if s of zero equals zero, meaning at time zero, the position or the height is zero, then the constant c must be zero. So now we know the position function s of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 40 t. So again, to review, we started with the acceleration function, which is only due to gravity. We use this to recover the velocity function and we use this to recover the position or height function. And now let's answer the questions. We can now determine the height after two seconds, which is s of two, which equals negative 16 times the square of two plus 40 times two, which is equal to 16 feet the height after two seconds is 16 feet. And now to answer the last question, what is the maximum height the ball reaches before falling back to the ground? 
we want to determine the maximum of the position function, which is s of t. This is a quadratic function, so we could find the vertex, but if we're using calculus techniques, remember, the maximum value will occur where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. And we know the first derivative of the velocity, and the first derivative of the position function is equal to the velocity function. So v of t, which equals s prime of t, we already know is negative 32 t plus 40, which is never undefined. So we'll set this equal to zero and solve for t. Subtracting 40 on both sides and dividing by negative 32. We have t equals 1.25 seconds. So this is when the ball reaches the maximum height. To determine the maximum height, we need to evaluate the position function s of t at t equals 1.25. which equals negative 16 times the square of 1.25 plus 40 times 1.25, which is equal to 25 feet. The ball reaches a height of 25 feet before falling back to the ground. I hope you found this helpful.